I've learned that I am not afraid to fail. I'm really afraid of living a life that I don't give it a try. Hi, I'm Angela Maxwell. I spent six and a half years walking my way westish around the world, across four continents, and over 20,000 miles. And this is Women Beyond Borders from Euro News Travel. One of my friends jokingly says that I waltzed around the world more than I walked it, <laughs> which I totally love. I am not an athlete. Like, that's one of the things that I feel like people have this misconception of. The way that I walk is the way that anyone walks, the way that you would walk. I'm not fast. In fact, if anything, I think I amble. I amble everywhere. <laughs> In 2014, I left Oregon to walk my way west-ish around the world. Uh, did it in a way that I was living on $5 less a day, and that was out of necessity. This was a way I could actually make the walk work. I slept in a tent every night, and the diet was pretty much oatmeal in the mornings and hot noodles at night. I decided I want to go where I'm called to go. And what that ended up meaning was there was a lot more starting, stopping, and then going back to points than I expected. So when I left in 2014, I left from Central Oregon in a town called Bend, Oregon, then I walked to Portland. And then I flew to Perth and I walked from Perth, Western Australia, up to Columbaroo. And then I ended up going to Da Nang, Vietnam, and I walked across Mongolia. So I walked Ulaanbaatar to Ulangam. At that point, I couldn't get into Russia. And that's when I decided to take a train to go to my next start point. And that was Tbilisi, Georgia, and walked along the Black Sea to Istanbul. From Istanbul, I went and I walked Sardinia and Sicily. What a lot of people don't know is as an American, is you only get 90 days within six months, and then you have to be gone for that period of time. And so I ended up trying to find other places to go for those three months that I was gone. So I went and I did the um, John O'Groats, the northern tip of Scotland, down through England. Then I took a ferry across the water, walked um, Holland, Belgium, France. I did uh, parts of Italy again, and then went off and did New Zealand, came back, continued Italy, up through Switzerland, and then in Switzerland is when my stepdad was ill and my mom asked for help to take care of him. So I made the decision, I'm gonna go home. I know that there's still parts of the world and parts of Europe that I still wanna walk. But I think now's the time to walk the States, going DC to Denver and then Denver to the center of Oregon, exactly where I started. The most common question that I get asked is why did you start walking? And surprisingly enough, that is still the most challenging question to answer. In that time, I had moved to uh, Bend, Oregon, which is in the center of, of the state of Oregon in the U.S. And I just started making a little nest for myself. I, I was living with a partner at the time. I, um, I lived really close to my best friend. A lot of stories are my life was crumbling and I needed to do something about it. And in this case, it was life was really sweet for me but there was still something calling me forward. And so part of me that was always wanting to see the world and experience it, it just tugged at those strings and it was a hard enough tug that I was willing to just everything go. I think my mom likes to say that she thought I had gone crazy. Um, you know, when I first told her, she begged me not to go. Fast forward about a year and a half into my walk, she can't stop talking about it to her hairdresser, to her friends. Next thing I know, she's calling me up saying that she wants to come join me on the adventure. So although my mom was really nervous in the beginning, uh, she joined me on a recumbent trike and did parts of England and Belgium and France and Holland. And in the very end, when I was raising money for her future coalition, she rode her bike from Washington, D.C. to Denver with me. So my walk in a way was able to also give an adventure to her as well. Australia was by far one of my favorites because that's where I learned I could do this. It stripped me down of the whole construct of who I was. And I learned I love the desert. 
I loved the terracotta and, and the dirt and my fingernails. Like Australia helped me find my confidence and strength. To do something that is courageous, and I would even say all it means is going beyond your comfort zone, stepping into a place where you're afraid, right? That the walk helped me to understand I do have a choice. When I was walking across Mongolia, one of my worst fears came true. A male Mongolian nomad came into my tent, into my tent at night with the intention of rape. That event had me sitting at a particular point right before sunrise and going, how am I going to keep walking now that this has happened? This is the moment that like, of course you go home, of course you go back to safety. But then what happened, I remembered all of those women's stories. Women who have endured much worse. And then I remembered seeing them, how they overcame it. I can be just as strong. I can do this. I don't have to give up this thing I'm passionate about doing because this event took place. One of the things that I really like to um, tell other women who want to do adventures, especially alone, please, please not let the stories of what happens negatively impact you from not doing something. And so you don't want to be naive to what's out there in the world, but be you know strong in yourself and know that you're capable of doing anything. And if you're not afraid of failing and knowing that you gave it a go, let that be an empowerment of how we share our stories.